This is Twit. We're going to say hi to Topher White. He's hey with the Rainforest Connection. I know the Rainforest Connection. Hey. That's a great That's organization. Thank you. Uh, you're trying to save the rainforest, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. The rainforest, forests all over the place. Deforestation um, is the number one cause of climate change. Uh, number two, but uh, that definitely What's counts. What's number one? Cow uh, farts. Energy, <laughs> in general. Okay. Yeah. Energy in general. <laughs> but yeah. I would, I, I, actually, I've been talking to the Rainforest Connection since they first started. I remember they told me it's the three C's. It's chains, mm -hmm. chainsaws, cows, and cars, right? Yeah, I mean, actually, it's, uh, it's, it's roads. So in our case, we're saying that, look, if, if it's the second largest contributor to climate change, almost 20% of all the carbon every year comes from deforestation, it's actually the roads that are the cause of that, and logging is what causes the roads. The roads into the forest, yeah. so they could take the trees out. Yeah, because logging is the most uh, lucrative one, so the, and 90% of logging in the rainforest is illegal. So if you can actually stop that, which is a mandate to do, because it's illegal, then you can have a big impact So outside. how did you come up with this idea? Uh, this all kind of started because I went to Indonesia as, uh, as a volunteer at a Gibbon Reserve. Uh, actually, here's an image of this right here. Uh, and this one place that I visited was, um, was just kind of actually spending all their time trying to oh. protect the outskirts of this, uh, this reserve from logging and realized that they had cell phone service out there. They had like no electricity, no running what? water, no roads. But they have cell service? It's cell service uh, in the jungle. There's no roads out there, you know, no, no running water. You no see this stuff. a lot because it's easy yeah. to do infrastructure that's wireless. Yeah. Now, you know, one of the interesting things about this is I've been hearing about this since I was a child. Mm -hmm. deforestation, the deforestation is happening. And all of the, the organizations that formed were about dealing with the consequences, like this, you know, mm -hmm. finding the animals and making sure that they were safe and, and perhaps trying to cut down in the amount of illegal logging but we haven't really had the technology or the political will to do something about actually stopping. Well, it's now we true. have the laws. We just need the. We need somebody out there watching. Is what that, we need. Yeah, it's a big place. Well, no, I mean it, it, the, the laws give us a mandate, not us. Even the people on the ground. There's people there who would stop it if they knew where it was and if they knew they had support. So you're saying loggers kind of basically sneak in? And uh, so they don't have to sneak in. They drive in with big old trucks, <laughs> you know. Uh, but and there's no one. The, it's a it's a f empty space. It is. So empty where space, is this yeah. thing you built? Oh yeah. So basically, this is the uh, this, this idea. This is look uh, at this. Well, yeah, the whole idea. So basically, uh, it has to be solar powered, right? Because we take these old phones, we put them up in trees, they listen to all the sounds of the forest, and they can pick out the sounds of chainsaws uh, and logging trucks and things like that. Uh, here's a kind of a dramatization of it all, if you want to see it. So you're and actually, these are listening devices. And it, you know, picks up the sound. and But they're so high up that the, the loggers aren't aware of them. Uh, that is correct, yeah. I mean, it's hard to see stuff up in a tree. Um, Especially and if it's shaped it like, like this, because yeah. it, it just looks like another set of leaves, basically. <laughs> Pretty Father much. Robert but came inside. in the room, and he looked at it and said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What did you say? You said you knew, like, because you're a maker. I, you, I thought it was a solar-powered en environmental sensor. But look, see, so sort of is. Yeah. It, it, well, look, we can do some pretty high-end stuff, right? So because there's cell phone networks, there's no reason for us to build some super high-end piece of technology because there's 150 million cell phones thrown away every year. And nobody wants so that cell phone. phone right? yeah, this, is, this is like uh, maybe an Android phone from 2007, yeah, Huawei. Yeah. Uh, but the funny thing is that it's so simple to put together. You know, um, you can sort of see another animation of that over here. So you but have power and you have audio. Uh, you sort of connect come together. to the microphone jack, right? Uh, do you run and you run just some custom software on it? Oh yeah, we just yeah we run an app on there that runs uh, and it streams up to the cloud and we can use AI to, to pull it out. But like the funny thing is that this is pretty easy to put together. This this one here was put together by a guy named Lucas in a, in a school. And Lucas is uh, is like nine years old. Oh this my god! This phone is god. ten years old. I thought that was kind of funny. The old phone is older than the, <laughs> the phone the, is older than the kids. And it's three D so. printed parts. Uh, yeah, we use like, basically the whole idea is we want to be able to use stuff that they can assemble there in the field. Like we're never going to save a ton of rainforest if we're the ones building it and sending it out there. So that's why we use old phones. That's why we use these boxes. How many do you want to get out there? Oh, I mean, um, well, it doesn't take that much actually. So. The thing with sound is that you can pick up sounds of chainsaws from, you know, a kilometer away, right? Or, you know, also third, a half a mile. That, yeah. And so, you, you know, we have some of these things up in, uh, in sort of, you know, at roads, at perimeter. So just a few dozen can protect thousands of square miles if you have people to respond. And I love this design. Idea. So we've got this. How much, how much voltage, how much power can this create, this solar panel create? Uh, this is, an, well, these things actually, because we stream all the audio to the cloud, they have to create a lot. So this is, uh, this is actually, we have to generate about 40 uh, watt hours per 24 hour so period. So 40 watt hours. And then inside that box, you've got some sort of converter to get that down to five volts. I'm yeah. betting you have a bunch of 18650 cells in there that just convert uh, it into usable power. Actually, we're, well, this is sort of the uh, older version. We got another one over here. It's over here somewhere. We're, uh, we're switching to a new battery technology, actually. So those are 26650s. But, yeah. Ooh, okay. but we're actually Ooh. switching to lithium iron phosphate. <laughs> lithium iron phosphate? Uh, yeah, That's going to give you more recharge cycles. And more recharge cycles nice. is more environmentally friendly. Uh, we don't want to put up situations where a battery could, you know, combust in a tree that kind of defeats the purpose oh yeah but that uh, be good. but no in general that's the idea is that we can we want these things to last for years they're like satellites but they're working really hard how high up does this have to be 
It doesn't to, have to, to get, be that high. Because, I mean, well, it has to in be the middle the of canopy, the canopy, though, right. right? To get the sun? In the canopy. So that's why you have really? this bizarre design, right? So these are actually recycled, uh, you know, um, shards that we get from a partner down in Santa Clara. So um, those aren't even new. Those are these recycled. These aren't even new. Well, they're not actually recycled, so they're like cutoffs from these high-end panels right. on backpacks and things like that. Oh, I get it. They're just yeah. extra. There's extra. And then we can solder these things together and cut it out. And, you know, this is still kind of... That's a great idea. <laughs> it really is. But, uh, no, at the end of the day, we I think that there's no reason for us to be building the hardware. Like, how we're going to really scale is that people out there are already on their second or third generation phones. They're going to be able to put these things together themselves. Phones will get more environmentally, uh, you know, stable and environmentally... Uh, um, so you, you know, want resilient. you want people like what was his name Lucas? You want him to download plans for this? How do, how can how can people get involved? Well, so I mean, at the moment, the big thing for us is that the hardware you can do a lot with uh, with not that much hardware, right? So uh, we really want to focus on the software side of things. We're a tech company. We're going to try and find a way we can be scalable. Um, and so I think at the end of the day, conservation can be as simple as uh, somebody sort of downloading an app out from the field and then putting a phone on a tree themselves. But that means that the way we want people to be involved is by downloading the apps here and, and getting into it. You mentioned earlier that the narrative hasn't really changed in like yeah. 30 years, you know? And I think that's because there's not a lot of originality when it comes to how to stop, uh, stop this stuff. And the only way we can make the rainforest persist and survive is that people here are able to care about it. But what we care about has changed over the past 20 years. Right. It has to be immediate. And so the same way we can send alerts to people on the ground, we can send alerts to people here. You can get an alert when a chainsaw goes off. We can tell you when a monkey goes through the forest. You can connect to the okay, forest we, in real time. Okay, we have to talk about that. Okay, so yeah. I, I like the tech. I, yeah. I love putting stuff like this together. But yeah. the big question is, what do I get out of this? So I've put, I've put an old cell phone up 100, 150 feet up into the canopy. Yeah. It's now connected to the cellular network. Mm -hmm. What am I getting and what can I do with it? Okay, so at this point, it's now streaming audio up into the cloud. We're analyzing it for anything, mostly chainsaws, locking trucks, but really any species you're looking for, there's an AI model that's going to help pick that out over time. So it's not just logging. I can not actually, uh, what, uh, machine learning to pick out individual species? Sure, and right now it's just <laughs> a few species, but we're going to make it hopefully very easy over the next few months for even ecologists to be able to sort of add species to it, and that can scale out across the whole system. So the idea behind it is that if you want to, if you want to get people to care about the forest, we have to turn the forest into a real experience for them. And that's not going to come from, you know, uh, telling them all the bad news and the rest. It's about them actually having a personalized connection to what's there. Well, to that end, you've got a VR app. Yeah, hey, that's that's kind of the idea. Let's, so let's get our daydream on here. So we're, I mean, do, do we have the daydreams? Oh no, we're just do it on the. Uh, we could show it on the Apple TV. Oh yeah, hey, cool. So, so hey, Rainforest Connection. I mean, basically every phone you put up there. Uh, you can uh, so anyone can download this app right yeah now. it's on the app store it's called search uh, for rainforest iOS connection. and Android or iOS, iOS and Android oh, so uh, what's it called search it's called uh, rainforest connection rainforest connection so search, search for rainforest for... connection yeah and so the whole idea behind this go. is that every phone you put up there yes it's sending alerts wait to a minute people. where is that that's in this is Brazil Brazil so this is a live stream coming out of Brazil uh, audio stream with an old phone basically a phone like this oh uh, up, in the, up in now the up in the we trees. should say the phone doesn't stream live video only because that would be a huge amount of bandwidth so yeah. this is a still picture yeah but that's real-time audio it's real-time audio and, and that's what's being analyzed for all the stuff so this is actually in a very dangerous area this is a tree in a, in a tembe reserve in brazil where this tribe is actually more or less taking back their area um, militantly from um, from illegal loggers and drug cartels. Uh, and so this is, whenever there's a truck that goes by, they get an alert, and then um, they're able oh. to respond in real time. So you're, you're alerting the tribe? You're alerting the tribe, yeah. I, um, I would assume that an internal combustion engine or a chainsaw makes a very distinctive sound. Oh, yeah. Well, um, you know a chainsaw yeah. does. You it can does. hear those a mile And so away. this tribe, I mean, it's a really amazing story. But this is the, kind of the whole principle, right, is that if we want to save the rainforest, it's not going to be us to go out there and do it. There's people there who would do it. These tribes are amazing. This guy, this guy here, this is the... Uh, is the Tembe warrior who, uh, who was able to sort of, um, they're responding to, uh, to alerts on a, on a regular basis. I want to stay right on to this guy. That is oh, awesome. No, but check this out. So like these, these guys there, if we want to fight wow. climate change, we're always thinking about energy. You know, we're thinking about right. how we can like, cut right. down our energy footprint, which is important. But there's people out there in the field where they can have a bigger impact on affecting climate change than, you know, dozen engineers at Tesla. Yeah. Just because they have the, that much in front of them. If we can just build small, pretty unimpressive technical tools to make a difference. Now, who pays for the for bandwidth on this? I mean... Uh, well, it's actually not that not that bad. Uh, I have to really give a shout out to T-Mobile. Uh, they they aren't philanthropically helping us, but I got to tell you that sort of unlimited um, that unlimited international <laughs> it works data everywhere <laughs> is pretty great. That's for, what I uh, use. Streaming things out of the forest. Yeah. So um, save uh, save rainforest as you go plan. It's true. Uh, <laughs> it's throttled, so it's not great for uh, for streaming video, but we're streaming audio, so no worries. You know. Yeah, PG is plenty for yeah, audio. audio yeah. stream is it's what 13k maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's even less than that. So I think it's um, we're assuming maybe like two or three kilobytes a second. Oh, um, it's perfect. Yeah, and get it out. So there. how many of these are out there? 
Uh, so at the moment, there are a little less than 70 out there in the field, but that's enough for us to protect what we think is uh, between three and 4,000 uh, square kilometers of Holy forest. Holy cow. Um, and you want to get more out? Is there any way oh, we can totally. help? How can we Yeah, help? I mean, I think that uh, it's all about sort of being able to listen in. We want to build a community around it, um, and we want to sort of get into it. And another thing on top of that is that, look, if we have the system that allows you to pick out insights from the forest, we want people to be able to grab that, like ecologists, biologists, and the rest. And we're also going to release an app, hopefully, uh, early next year that allows anybody to take this and put this on their windowsill. And they can oh. actually get a, an alert when their favorite bird comes into the backyard oh. or the other sorts of things happen. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, once you've got the technology, you can expand this incredibly. I mean, <laughs> you, can, you can start uh, categorizing city sounds. This is like a ring yeah. doorbell for the forest. Yeah. That's a really great idea. I love <laughs> that. Certain sense. So, um, uh, can we, yeah. What's the website? How can uh, we website, help? Uh, what can we do? RFCX.org, but really just, uh, I think that the, just go on the App Store, I, oh, iOS yeah. or Android, and, and download the app. Uh, that'll be the great way for us to stay in contact. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks, Look guys. for Rainforest Connection. Yeah, hey. RFCX. There we are. We've got, we're going to get in some really org. cool stuff, I think. This um, combines so many things that this network loves. The fact that you're reusing old technology, keeping mm -hmm. it out of landfills, the fact that you've created something new, the fact that you're helping the environment, and the fact that, I like this, you are giving people a tool to defend their homes. I love like, it. Seriously. And, and you know, when they do that, How inspiring. they're, they're yeah. inspired to do it anyway. If, they, if they're doing that, they're helping us. They're doing the job right. for us when it comes to climate change. I mean, Did you have help designing this? How, who, who, tell me about your, the team involved. Uh, so the team involved is, uh, is fantastic. We're mostly working on some really uh, cool cloud-based technologies for, uh, for helping to... Um, to you, know, you must have AI people insights. and Yeah, we got, a, we got a good team of AI people, but we realized pretty early on that we couldn't be hiring more data scientists to build more models to pick out new things. So that's why we sort of made a choice that just like having phones in trees to make it so rangers don't have to go out there and find things, we have to build a system that allows us to automate the detection of new species. Yeah, yeah. And so that's really what we're working on. But uh, we're focused on ways that anyone can get involved. Uh, the rainforest will only be saved if we can make the rainforest interesting to the world. And that's what this app's about. That's what the rest of this is all about. So uh, we think that it's going to be that connection between the people in the field who are doing this great work and the people here. But that's not going to happen naturally. It's up to us to, to, to sort of incentivize people to, to care. Uh, and that's what uh, this real-time connection is all about. Very nice. Topher, really great Thanks, to guys. meet you. RFCX.org. Thank Thanks Keep a lot, you up guys. the great work. Wow. Hey. This is it's everything we we're interested this, this in in us. every respect. This is what we do. I love it. <laughs> uh, this you guys talk about everything that we're interested in. So <laughs>